Just wait until you see my spot. Another day has passed. I didn't film anything today because it was a rainy day leaving the mountaintop there. But we are now 50 miles out of Tucson in the cactus, uh, there we go, in the cactus forest. So we are boondocking tonight. If you can see right here, that's about 20 foot tall cactus. So I can't show you much now, but we have settled into our spot. And now it's dinner time. It is a late one. It is seven o'clock. So it takes two hours to get out of that uh, mountainside spot. It is one of the worst roads I've driven in my life. It's a dirt road, but it's the worst washboard effect dirt road ever. If you want to check out that spot, just know it's two hours. It's 26 miles. Anything faster, you'll probably rattle your camper apart but not a difficult road, just an annoying road. So that took a long time. But now it is dinner time and tomorrow I'll show you these crazy cactuses. <laughs> this is what they call the cactus forest dispersed camping ground. I don't know if this is actually the area is called the cactus forest, but I would assume it is. I am about a f two feet shorter than the first arm on that. Look at that thing. Massive. And that's not even the tallest one. So when I was looking for a place to sleep last night, I found this place. And there's only three reviews on the dirt. And uh, it said lots of coyotes carry a gun. Another one said lots of coyotes. Another one said you could get stuck in the sand. We took a gamble here and I'm glad we did. So we were going to go to Saguaro, but I think this satisfies the cactus needs. <laughs> So anyways, I will get some drone footage of this area. I'll take some pictures of some cactus. But now is breakfast time. A long day and I was tired uh, so I didn't film where we were but we are on our way to the white sand dunes we didn't make it so we found this spot in Bowie Arizona but today is a 230 mile drive I found a dispersed campsite on a lake on a beach so that's where we're going today then tomorrow we'll see white sand dunes but this is our spot we stayed at last night um, pretty crazy rock formation and mountains Again, this is dispersed camping. This is a, actually like a recreational park. Mountains much higher, but it's covered by the clouds, but all these crazy balancing rocks. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, so nothing really interesting yesterday. But today, as I said, we're off to New Mexico, another state. 
hopefully everything goes smooth and yeah tonight it's gonna be a chill night thanksgiving we got steaks we don't have turkey but we're gonna do some steaks on the grill had a lake on a beach weather's been kind of bad the last two days so i haven't had a full charge of solar we're running at about 61 percent battery now that should be good for another day tomorrow should be partly cloudy and the next day should be full sun which we will need by then but yeah i'll check in with you when we get to the campsite tonight Alrighty guys, well here is the camp spot for tonight. We're about five miles outside of um, the White uh, Sand National Park. This is a dispersed camping area and right behind me is another micro mini. So that's cool. Um, yeah, right on a little reservoir man-made lake. I'm gonna grill up some steaks now and then I'll check in with you guys and let you know where the next adventure is going to take us. We don't know where we're going tomorrow, but we will figure it out. That's a good view for cooking some Thanksgiving dinner. Well guys, hopefully you enjoyed that episode, but as you can see, I move around a lot. So I wanna just quickly go over how I get to camp and how I set up and how I leave camp. Now the way I do it is so I have minimal things to do, both set up and break down. So firstly, when I get to my campsite, be it boondocking or not, I visually look for a level area. And I'm more worried about level left to right than front to back. Once I figure out where I'm gonna go, I turn on my level Mate Pro app. Now this is a device you install in your camper that tells you if your camper is level front to back and left to right. So the good thing is it's a Bluetooth device and it connects to my phone while I'm still in the car. So when I back up to the area I want to be or pull into the area I want to be, I just open the app, it syncs with the app and it tells me if I'm level left or right or front or back. The one area I don't really mind being unlevel is front to back. I need to be more down on on the tongue than anything. And one thing I rarely do is I unhook the car. So I normally keep the car and the camper connected. So what I do is I lower the tongue jack to release some weight off the car. So if we are about two, three inches down on the nose, that jack will actually bring it up, releasing weight on the rear of the car and making sure that the camper is now level. Now there are some instances where I cannot find a spot that is level left to right. So I do carry a very small bag that has leveling chalks in them. So I'll put a link down below for those. Now, once I have the tongue jack down, I know that my camper is level. So what I have have installed on my stabilizing jacks are little pads. I'll put a link down below for those. But what that eliminates is me putting pads or blocks under the stabilizing jacks because they actually have feet attached to them already. This saves me a ton of time and a ton of space. So then I go around with an impact driver, a DeWalt one that I just carry, and then I put those down. Now, if I am on a pretty steep incline or decline or parked somewhere sketchy, I will put my X chalks on the camper wheels. I'll put a link down below for those. Those are really the only X chalks that fit the micro minis because our axles are really close together. So that's the only time I actually chalk my wheels or if I actually disconnect the camper from the SUV and I leave the camper, then I'll put those there. But nine times out of 10, I don't use those. I don't find an extreme difference in the stability or the rocking of the camper when I don't use those. And I do leave the parking brake on in my car, so I make sure we can't roll anywhere. Keep in mind, even though I don't use the X chalks, I do have at least five points of contact with the ground, so the four stabilizing jacks and the tongue jack, and then another four contacts to the ground with the SUV because I am attached. So I'm not worried about using those X chalks all the time. 
So as you can see, it's pretty easy and quick to get set up and obviously to break down and get ready to go. All I have to do is put up that tongue jack and the stabilizing jacks and then I can hit the road. So that's what makes it pretty easy for me to only stay at a campground for let's say eight hours on average. Now guys, if I'm having a bonfire, I do put all our furniture out and our fire pit out. But then before we go to bed, I put everything back at night. I rarely leave anything outside firstly because we boondock and I don't know who's outside at night. But secondly, because in the morning when we're leaving, I don't want extra things to do. I want to just focus on getting on the road. Now guys, I know that's pretty different, but I figured I would share it with you guys. But that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Happy New Year and thanks a lot for tuning in. And until next time, I'll see you then.